Hello, welcome, uh, guys. Uh, today we will be going on our series of one hub. The box or the virtual machine would be ICA one, and uh, I will put the link into the description section below so you can download the image of this box. So before we started, before we start, sorry, excuse me. Uh, if you do not mind, please subscribe to my channel. I do appreciate your whole your help and support. So now let's get started. To save the time, I have already imported into the virtual box, and the IP address has been identified as two hundred and fifty four. And I also done the Nmap scanning. From the Nmap scanning result, we can know the four open ports. The first one is twenty-two, and which runs SSH, and the version information is here, and、uh, which doesn't have any vulnerability. We can exploit, and the next one is eighty, which runs HTTP surface, and the version is Apache, and also the next one, next two are for the MySQL. So I think the next thing what we are going to do is to do some emulation for the AT port. Let's open up、uh, our browser of Firefox. Let's input the IP address. Yeah, now Im immediately we got the prompt, which we need to input the email and the password. But、uh, of course we. Do not have such credentials, but I think you you can notice in the middle of the page, tell us the CMS is Q QDPM, and also the version number, so we can do the exploit search by search exploit QDPM, and、uh, the version is nine point two. And we got the two vulnerabilities, and、uh, I think we can, we may use the second one. We can make a copy or retrieve the the exploit description, and by the command, and we can copy the pass. Sorry. And paste in here. Now we have already got the exploit code or description. Maybe this is not code because extension is txt. We can cut the content. This one. So this one,、uh, it says the the password and collection string for the database are stored in yum file, and we can access this file to. And download this file to get the collection credentials. So we can copy this part and go to our Firefox. And we remove the duplicate slash, and we can copy. And now we have already got the we have already downloaded this database YAML file. And we can move that file into our di working directory database, and we can cut、uh, this file. So it said the user name. I think、uh, this use this credential are used for the collecting database, which is MySQL、uh, for this target, and、uh, the user name here, and also the password. So we can use this. Credential to make a collection, right? We we can MySQL specify the user name is QDPM admin, and、uh, the host is two hundred and fifty four, and we can copy this password and paste in here. Now we have already login. Or connect it into the database. We can show the database, and、uh, of course, I think、uh, we need to use the first one, QDPM, to see 
whether we can get some useful information. We can show tables. Uh, so many tables. Of course, the the most interesting interesting thing for us is users, and we try to retrieve the credentials, and we can select star from the users table, but uh, this table uh, is empty. So we can uh, maybe we can scroll up a bit. Maybe we next database we need to focus on or pay attention to its stuff. We can use the stuff. Now we have already changed the database to stuff and we can show tables to see how many tables in this database. And we can select all of items from the login. And we got the password and uh, such password uh, encoded in maybe the base 64, right? And also we can select the, the user table. So the user name. So I think, uh, we, of course, in this database, we didn't have, we didn't get the email. If we come to the portal, login portal, we need to get the email and the password. But the password, maybe we have already got that. But email, we didn't have. Because here just uh, shows you some uh, name information. So I think uh, now maybe we cannot uh, go into this direction to find the email and the password. But uh, we, ha we have already got the password and the name and the name. We can create the user name dictionary and the password dictionary. But before we do that, we need to decode the password, right? And let's quit the database. We can echo. And decode. Yeah, we got the password. And uh, let's do the same for the second password. And uh, also next is third one. Yeah, and the next one, the fourth one. Okay, the final one, which is this. We can copy, echo is in here and uh, decode. Okay, now we can uh, use this uh, mouse pad to generate our password dictionary. We can copy and paste in here. And next we can copy and paste in here. And also Copy and also copy this password and also I think we need to have five, right? Oh, sorry, I missed this uh, first one. Yeah, we can save into the our working directory. I yeah, we can name as uh, pass dict yeah save and also we need to uh, save the user name as user direct user dictionary sorry smith lucas and chavis dexter dexter mayor okay i think that's all and we can copy to user dict. And now we can use the Hydra very strong tool when we try to decrypt something. And we can specify the 
user list and the password list. And specify the IP address of the target. I think it's good to go. Yeah, because the password dictionary and the user name dictionary are very small. So immediately we got the result and we can log in. Uh, for example, log in this one, sh Travis. Okay, we need, need to remove the cached session first and then log in and we can pa paste the pa copy the password and paste in here. Now we successfully log in as Travis and then let's list the content. We got the user flag and also we can do some local immigration like uh, my circle but nothing found and also we can cut the history but nothing found also we can check if the user can run the command with root privilege of course we need to copy the password which is very very nancy and complicated but uh, this user travis may not run sudo on this target so maybe we can we need to switch to another user we just now have already got uh, two sets of credentials we can go to the home directory and uh, switch to another user because we have already got uh, the password for this user also, we can copy and paste in here. And this is the content and here is one note file. Yeah, it is, seems to me that there is a weakness while uh, accessing the system. system. As far as I know, the contents of executable files are partially viewable. I need to find out if there is a vulnerability or not. So it means that I think there is some executable which is located somewhere and we need to find out such file or executable file. We can use the find, specify the perm as option to find out any file with SUID bit and uh, we need to find out uh, the file not uh, uh, not the the directory and uh, redirect the error to the black hole but uh, nothing found but uh, nothing found yeah. Type of file find. Find. Yeah. I think uh, file. But nothing found. It's a bit weird because I did this before. It works. I think uh, we can go to the op directory. Yeah. So I think we, as you can see, there is one file with SUID bit. And we can run this command. Yeah, it. Uh, server information. So I think this this command or file displays some information about uh, this target, like a uh, firewall information, operating system information, and the network information. But um, it looks a bit. I I I cannot understand why 
I cannot find out this command with the find. What's the problem? The find. Yeah, find perm. Type. Anyway, we can go on. Now we can because the the author give us the hint. You remember? Yeah, as far as I know, the contents of executable files are partially viewable. Yeah, it does. We can use the command strings to to do this to view some readable code in the executable file. Yeah. So all of readable codes are displayed over here. Let's have a look at these codes. And we need to I, I think you have not noticed the this this code or this line. This line do the cat and cat the this of course this file is read only by the root user. And uh, because because of the SUI bit and this command this get access command can run this can run this line. So we we need to create our own cat because this cat is not absolute um pass. And we can create our own cat and uh, by this our own cat and then we can escalate our privilege. Let's do it. We can go to the temp 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 directory, excuse me, we can create our own cat, but uh, the function would be uh, would be uh, the bash can run the command as loot privilege. We can redirect to the cat and change the mode to make this executable. But also we need to change the pass variable at the temp or current directory to the pass variable to the existing pass variable. And now we can run that command again. Immediately we got the root shell and we can list the content of this directory. Oh, we cannot use a cat. We can use more, right? Because now the cat, the function is different. Root. Yeah, we got the root shell. So anyway, we have already complete, completed this box. Got the root shell and got the retrieved the root flag. But uh, just uh, there is only one thing I'm not... Uh, satisfied by myself with myself uh you know normally we when we try to or ad, attempt to find out the command with the suid bit and then we can use this command but this time i when i i did i run this command earlier this command didn't re didn't give us any result, yeah, blank result. Mm, but uh, I'm, I do not know. So if you can find something weird for this command, please help me in the in the comment section. Okay. Anyway, that's all I'd like to demonstrate in this video. I hope to see you in the next one.